Hey folks, today I'm going to do a video. I've already shot it. I'm filming this after I shot it, but I'm doing a video today over this thing, the Glock 45 MOS. This is a gun that I never thought I would buy. I always wanted the 45 to be a 17 length slide and a 19 length grip. That way I could have more sight radius and velocity and a shorter grip to carry it concealed. But Glock didn't see fit to do that and they gave us the 45 MOS, which is the 17 length grip and the Glock 19 length slide and barrel. Um, I've been looking at this thing for a while and um, I've been going back and forth on whether I should get one or not. Um, I needed another Glock for a certain test that I'm doing. So I figured, heck, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the 45 MOS. And uh, actually, when you see it on the range, uh, I was pleasantly surprised with it. Anyway, the Glock 45 MOS. As you can see, I've already added some texturing to it. I put a stipple pattern on there that I call velvet. It's, it looks nice and soft, but it's not. It's actually very grippy. I like that texture. I've also done a double undercut to the trigger guard and added a little texture to that front part up there. Smooth this out with thousand grit sandpaper and now I'm ready to go. The only thing that I've really done to the gun mechanically is I changed the trigger. That's it. Uh, it's still factory everything. The only thing is I put an Overwatch Precision trigger uh, and trigger bar in it. But other than that, it didn't really do anything to the factory trigger. Weight, break, nothing like that. Just the way my finger lands on the uh, trigger pad, I like the way it feels because uh, I have short fingers. But anyway, let's get out to the range. Let's run this thing and uh, see if I like it or not. Well, 10 yards, it don't get you much more sighted in than that. You can tell, first two rounds are right dead center. I dropped two low left, that was me. And then that one, 10 yards. I'd say she's probably sighted in. We'll go on and do some drills. All right, 25 yards, one in the middle. One on the right. One on the left. Middle. Right. So, that's no big feat to shoot uh, 25 yards with a handgun. It's really not. It's not a big feat. But if you're not, uh, I want to say an experienced shooter, but if you haven't done it a lot before, you'll find out it's pretty challenging. But uh, as long as you have good trigger manipulation and uh, you watch that red dot, and the red dot really helps, uh, it's not a big problem at all. So let's move on back to 50 and see if I can do it. All right, I'm going to try shooting from the 50-yard line now. 50 yard line with a six inch plate is, it's a little challenging. So uh, I'm probably gonna take my time a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in with the camera and let y'all see if I'm making hits. So uh, let's try it out from the 50 yard line. Plate on the left first, plate on the left. Hit. Yep, clinging that still, clinging it. 
Let's turn this dot down a little bit because it's kind of bright. We'll move over to that middle target, see if I can hit that. Missed it. Got it. Got it. One on the right. Yeah, I think I got it. We'll go down there and look here in just a second. I painted them so we could see where the rounds are going. Try it a couple more times. Got it. I think I missed it. Got it. All right. I catch some grief sometimes because I don't uh, stretch my guns out and uh, uh, shoot them at longer distances. I know with some of my STI videos or staccato videos, I think maybe even a CZ video, uh, uh, people were saying I was shooting too close and I needed to stretch them out to get the most out of it. So. I missed one on this target. This is 50 yards. We got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, I'm not sure. This one, I shot at it three times. I made two hits, so I missed one. Uh, on this one, I didn't have any misses, and that's my group at 50 yards. So not great, but at 50 yards, that's a pretty challenging shot. So um, I think it's okay. There's always room for improvement. I always try to improve, but uh, for all y'all that wanted me to stretch the guns out a little bit farther, there you go. I stretched them out for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is kind of like, uh, kind of like the bare solutions drill I do on paper, but I'm gonna do it on steel. I'm gonna shoot five rounds to the left target, five rounds to the right target, do a reload and shoot three rounds to the middle target. I'm gonna do it from about 10 yards. So let's see how this goes. Not great, 683, not terrible. Let's try that again, that was fun. Second run, second run. Not very good transitions there, little off. But it's a faster time, 664, 664. Oh, uh, I'm gonna leave it there and just have a little fun shoot. All right, I'm gonna do the bill drill. Uh, doing it a little farther than what you usually do it. I'm doing it at about eight yards. So uh, I just don't want backsplash from the target. So let's do the bill drill a couple of times and see how fast we can get it today. a 227. Eh, I'd like to get it closer to two. Well, 212. I'd still like to get it a little bit closer. Try it again. Two oh five. Let's see if we can get it under two. Ah, messed that one up. That would have been pretty good. That's a two twenty. Two twenty. Now let's see if we can do it one more time. Cause I want to get it down right around two. Two oh five, two oh five. Trying to speed up my trigger finger. Nah, didn't get it. Didn't get it. Two point oh two. I think I threw a shot. Let's try it on the bigger target. Make it a little bit easier. Cause I was shooting it on that little six inch target, which is an A zone. By the way, that small silhouette I've got, that's an A zone. So. If I make a hit, they're all A-zone hits. Let's try it on this bigger target and see what I can do. Woo! 
nine six. One nine six. Let's try it one more time. One nine one with a slow draw. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try the 10 10 10 drill, but on steel, and uh, I'm gonna shoot it from a little farther back from 10 yards. I'm at about 13 yards, and uh, just kind of see what I can do with it. Now, remember, I'm not wanting to go super fast, I'm just wanting to keep it under 10 seconds and keep the rounds as closely together as possible. So it's a drill that helps you uh, operate, I guess you could say under stress because you're on the clock. It helps uh, with your marksmanship and it helps with follow-up shots. So this is a Ken Hackathorn drill. Really like Ken Hackathorn. Y'all can say what you want to about the old fella. He's old, but uh, he's, still a, he's still a good one to listen to. So let's try this out. I went way too fast, way too fast. That was a 5.75. The groups were pretty good, but I can do better. So I want to slow down this time, run it one more time. Let me go paint that target up. Before I do this drill, when I explained the drill, uh, I said it adds a little extra level of pressure. And you know, you think out here on the range with nothing out here, no adversaries coming in, there's no pressure. But when anytime you put yourself on the clock, you subconsciously add a little bit of pressure to yourself if you let it affect you. I let it affect me there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm still gonna go on the clock, but I'm gonna make myself slow down so I can get more accurate hits on target. So let's see if we can do it this time. Here we go. Better, much better. There's some splatter up there, but my groups are about like that, about the size of a baseball. I'm gonna run it one more time and uh, see if I might be able to close those groups up just a little more. And the time was a 10.01, almost perfect. too fast but it's a 641 all my rounds are about like that that's what I'm wanting so uh, not bad go check out old Ken Hackathorn he's something else so what do I think about this thing well let me make it simple for you if you like Glocks you're gonna like this if you don't like Glocks you're not gonna like it it's a Glock. It's a Glock. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I like Glocks. Uh, I like 1911s. I like CZs. I like Smith & Wesson M&Ps. I don't like Springfield XDs. But I like Glocks. And there is nothing revolutionary about this gun that is going to make you like a Glock if you don't already like them. Uh, I might say the recoil impulse might be just a tad lighter than a 17 or a 19, but I don't know. Not enough to make a difference, in my opinion. Uh, I think the size of the gun for law enforcement would be pretty good, mainly because you could use a Glock 19 holster, and when you put it in your holster and you sit down in your car, it's not digging into your seat or pushing up from your seat into your side. But if you go to put a light on the end of it, then you're just negating all that. It's going to push up anyway. Uh, military use, I don't really see. Well, this will be a benefit over a 17 or a 19. It's just another model. 
Um, I'm not saying I don't like the gun. I do like the gun. I really like the gun. I thought it shot great. I was making hits all the way out at 50 yards with it. Uh, but it doesn't do anything that a regular Glock 17 or a Glock 19 can't do. It's just a different option for you. And you know what? That's not always bad. Uh, as gun owners, we like to have options. I can tell you, back in the 90s and early 2000s, we didn't have a whole lot of options. Now, we do. We are currently living in the golden age of firearms. Just about any firearm you can think of, you're able to purchase. That's a good thing. We are living in the golden age of firearms, and this is just an example of it. It's not something that's revolutionary. It's just another option to the consumer, and that's a good thing. Um, let me tell you about the Delta Point Pro on here. I like the Delta Point Pro. It's my favorite optic. It always has been. Um, I bought this thing three or four years ago. I've never had any problems out of it. The battery lasts as long as I need it to. I change the battery once a year. Granted, I don't carry this optic every day. This optic was mounted on a gun that lays on my bedside nightstand. All right? But every time I pick it up, the dot's on. So uh, I don't have a problem with the Delta Point Pro. I actually like it. I know they say it's not as strong as the RMR. They're right. It's not as strong as the RMR. But you know what? There ain't an optic out there that has a case that's as strong as the RMR case. Hollow Sun doesn't have a case that's as strong as an RMR case. Nobody does. They came up with the perfect design. They patented that design, and now they're the only ones that have it. I will say I've had problems with other RMRs where I've never had problems out of this one Delta Point Pro. I've had a problem with a Hollow Sun. If y'all watched the last video, uh, it started flickering in and out on me. I've never had a problem with this uh, Delta Point Pro. So now the one thing I don't like about it is that you have to use this rear dovetailed sight that fits in and you really need a taller front sight. Now this is a suppressor height sight from Ameriglow. It's black, I like it black when I'm running a red dot, but it still needs to be a little bit taller in order to get a true lower third co-witness. You can co-witness with this sight, but your shots are gonna be high. Uh, I've got this up or down as far as I can sink it. And in order to get that sight or that shot lower, I need to put a taller front sight on it to bring it down. Um, but that's not a deal breaker. I can still make effective combat hits. My shots are just going to be about two inches high. So I have to remember that. Um, as far as, uh, the texturing on the gun, you can tell, I put my, what I call velvet texture on the gun. And, uh, I did a double undercut. All right. Uh, I, this is my favorite texture that I do, uh, but I remembered why I don't do it very much when I started doing it. It takes forever to do, and it's a pain in the butt. But once it's done, man, it's nice. Uh, it's not overly aggressive, but I promise this texture is so grippy, your hand's not going to move. Uh, and it looks pretty good, too. It's just a nice, subdued look, and uh, I like it. Looks better in person than it's showing up on the camera, but uh, trust me, it, it looks pretty good. Um, final thoughts on the gun. Like I said before, if you like Glocks, you're gonna like it. If you don't like Glocks, you're not gonna like it. There's nothing revolutionary here. It is a good shooting gun. It might be just a little bit faster than a regular 17, but it's not by much. And in the real world, I don't think it would really make that big of a difference. So uh, thank y'all for watching. That's my thoughts on the Glock 45 MOS. Y'all have a good one.